to Chef AJ Live. I am so happy for a year, for a year, I'm, for you. I'm happy that you are here and I'm, happy, I'm grateful that you guys write in so many nice emails that you like the show and that you love the guests and you're going to love today's guest. It's actually my first time. It's not my first time meeting her. I've seen her at conferences, but it's my first time really interviewing her or interacting with her. And it's really funny how that a lot of people recommend the guests. And this guest was recommended by a dear friend, a mutual friend of ours, Ann Wheat, who is the owner of Millennium <laughs> Restaurant, where last week we had the chef on the show. So it really is six degrees of separation or less. And she's going to be making three absolutely delicious recipes that you'll have in the show notes. She is known as the nutrition professor. She has a wonderful book, which I hope she will show us so that we can get it and find out where we can get it. I'm guessing Amazon is one place. And her name, she has a really cool name, actually, Timarie Hagenberger. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I am so excited. And actually, one of my recipes that I'm doing today, Anne loves so much that she I'm going to show you how to use it as a dip, but I think she eats it with a spoon. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I wanted to help people get ideas about dressings. And I wrote a book called The Foodie Bar Way. So I will grab it and show it. Um, foodiebars.com is the best place to get it. it. You can get it on Amazon too. Um, but what it helps people do is create their own recipes and meals that offer a lot of variety. And I teach college, I am a nutrition professor. So I have students who have very little experience in the kitchen and then others who have, you know, already gone to chef school and come back for extra education. So trying to meet everybody's needs. But when we're transitioning to whole food plant-based, Dressings are one of those things that we really need to focus on because they're always full of oil and all kinds of chemicals. And even when you spend a lot of money on a nice quote unquote dressing in the supermarket, you know, so those super expensive ones, they have weird aftertaste. They're full of chemicals. We just don't need to go there. So what I like to do is give people confidence about how to make their own dressings. And there's actually two sections of the book that specifically address that. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but I wanna get going on a recipe because I think I have already gotten myself into an over delivery situation with three different recipes today. So we're gonna do one. I did a demonstration for PBNSG, the plant-based nutrition support group out of Michigan. I'm their dietitian. And I did one with a mango dressing. And on my website, there's a great article about meal planning tips. And it features the mango dressing because I make that consistently. But what I thought about, I am doing, our front yard is we've converted to completely edible. So there's nothing growing in our front yard that isn't edible. And the basil was just gorgeous. So as you can see, I have purple basil and I have more of the traditional Italian basil. So I thought, I want to do this dressing, but I want to tweak it and give you the confidence to be able to do that in your own recipes. So instead of mango, we're going with cuties, the little mandarin oranges. And instead of cilantro, we're going with basil. But I'm keeping the rest of the ingredients consistent. And that way you can refer back to that recipe on my website and get all of those tips. So I started out with several cuties. I was looking at about a cup of frozen mango. So that's, I'm a little over maybe a cup of the cuties. So I peeled them, but before I peeled them, I zested. So you probably don't want to use all of the zest for all of those cuties because it may be a little bitter, but whenever you can incorporate, my students always know, whenever you can incorporate zest, citrus zest, it's a great thing, not only for flavor, but it actually has been shown to reduce um, skin cancer, just like the little fruit is protected by the little uh, phytonutrients in the zest from the sun beating down on them all day. It can help us with skin cancer prevention too. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the zest from this last cutie and then I'm also going to zest limes. We're going to add some lime in here too. So this is going to be a little citrus party. But the microplane I found is 
very, very useful. And we're gonna use it several times today in this recipe. So we've already used it once for the cutie. Uh, and could you use regular quote unquote, like navel oranges? Absolutely. Could you use tangelos, all the different tangerines? Yes. So we're gonna drop those in. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, and I actually should have done this first, is garlic. Whenever you're working with garlic and heat or garlic and acid, which could be anything like tomato or vinegar, like in this recipe, we wanna make sure we crush the cells in the garlic first and let it sit before we expose it to that heat or um, acid. So what I like to do is use a garlic press or just mince the garlic first and then let it sit while I'm assembling the rest of the ingredients. So here's a trusty garlic press. So now I can just let this sit, okay? So that's just a great tip to remember. When I was growing up, my um, I cooked a lot with my Italian Nona and my German grandma. And with my Italian Nona, we would make sauce all the time, but she would start with a hot pan, always olive oil, right? Always. And then the onion. And then she'd press the garlic after the onion was translucent. She'd press the garlic right into the hot pan. So little did she know that Garlic is still very helpful, but it doesn't have as much of those um, cancer preventing phytonutrients if we expose it right away to the heat. So we're gonna let that sit. So we've got garlic that's gonna go in there. We can keep going with the citrus. I wanna add some lime. So trick with citrus, if you're gonna get juice from it is to roll it, right? So roll in, roll in, roll in. That's this what, that's what I say, roll in, roll in, roll. Would you mind if I read a few comments to you from people? Yes, please. Great, thank you. So we have one of your students from uh, the con con Consumies, Consumness River College who took your course, Trina, who's watching. Robin wants to know, are all of those cookbooks on your shelf? And uh, let's see, so there, there was a funny comment from Kathy about uh, where's the ladder? Does that make sense to you? Yes, because the cookbooks are super high. Um, yes, those cookbooks, I have been loving food since I was tiny. So I would ask for crazy things like a mixer for my 11th birthday. And I have been saving and collecting cookbooks for years and years and years. And I don't even use many of those up there because a lot of those were pre-plant-based, but so I don't have to get up there too often, but my other vegan cookbooks are on this side. So yes, I am a cookbook theliac. I think that's what they call it when you just can't get enough. I think there's a support group for that. Yeah, well, I could run it. All right, so now we've had the zest of the lime in, so we're gonna just add the juice. And I've had, I don't know about you, Chef AJ, but I've had some of those squeezers, the citrus squeezers, like the garlic press, but I've broken every single one I've had. I don't know if I just squeezed too hard because I want all of the juice. So I have gone back to the good old reamer, right? I mean, it, this is as basic as it gets with tools, but it is so good. It actually gets all of the juice out. And it makes it easy with limes because we're not dealing with seeds. If I was doing this with lemon, I would do it over a bowl first so that I could take the seeds out. But I'm gonna add the juice of two limes and do not worry about writing down the ingredients. It's all gonna be there for you. Chef AJ has the link in the show notes and you're gonna be able to get to it. So just relax. And I'm happy to take any questions as we go along that you have, and we'll just work well, through. Well, you know, using the reamer is also a better workout. Yes, and I'm all into that. That's actually funny. Everybody asks about those arms, those arms. Yes, I do lots of push-ups. I do lots of exercise that I love because my body is a gift. So. All right, next thing we're gonna add is our ginger and turmeric. Now, you're gonna watch me. I'm going to get them in the freezer. 
So you may wonder why is she keeping these in the freezer? Because they are so much easier to deal with when they're from the freezer. So what I did is I want, I cleaned them well. And then here we go with that microplane again. I'm gonna right now microplane the ginger. And I don't know how much experience you've had with ginger. It is ridiculously anti-inflammatory, but it gets really stringy. So if you're trying to chop it, it can get stringy. The other thing, and my students know this, is I don't like throwing away good food. And if I have ginger in my refrigerator, it can mold. And so the last thing I wanna do is have my heart set on making a stir fry or dressing and then pull that little drawer open and see a piece of shriveled up moldy ginger. Well, if you put it in the freezer, it doesn't do that. And then when you use the microplane, it doesn't get stringy at all. You get beautiful ginger. Now, turmeric has also been shown to be actually even more anti-inflammatory. Although I think it's easy to get stuck on one food versus another. And I think, you know, the idea about variety and the research about the microbiome has shown that the ticket to a healthy microbiome is variety. So that's what we want to embrace. So turmeric, and I don't know if you've ever bought it like this, but turmeric root looks a lot like ginger, except it is bright orange. Where I find it in my um, supermarket is right next to the ginger. And many people just walk right by. Now it's not cheap per pound. You know, it's like nine, I think it was 9.39 yesterday per pound, um, but it's gorgeous color, but it's so light that it was like a dollar 57, you know, I mean, it, for a whole bunch. So I washed it and then I stuck it right in the freezer. And so that's, that's the ginger and turmeric. Now, whenever you use, let me put this back. Whenever you use turmeric, we know we have to make sure we're putting in black pepper because that will help our liver not break down the really active compounds in the turmeric that are health promoting and infl inflammation lowering. So in this recipe, now, I can get out measuring spoons, but I don't really need to. You know, dressings are not like baking. So dressings, you can just kind of throw things together, taste, add a little more, add a little less. And especially if you're talking about these types of ingredients. So I'm gonna do a little shake of pepper, but again, you can, the recipe is there for you. And then I'm gonna put in, let's see, I think I'm gonna go with the mustard first. So mustard powder, and when you look at prepared mustards, they're great, but some of them have quite a bit of sodium. So I know with Chef AJ's SOS free, you're gonna want to go with the, as little sodium as possible. And if you go for just yellow mustard seeds, then that's just mustard seeds. So there's zero sodium. So you have complete control over it. And this can be pretty strong as far as flavor wise, but a little pinch put onto a cooked or chopped green will bring back some of the enzymatic power that you would have had raw. So this is a boost that every dressing you make, sneak some in. Every time you have some kind of, um, Go ahead. Did you have a question? Yeah, if, if, just whenever you have a chance, maybe like yeah. I'll, I'll raise my hand just because I don't want to lose the, the feed. A couple of people have questions like, Karen, are you peeling the ginger and turmeric? And Robin wanted to know if you could also use a food processor to make the dressing. And Robin says she loves it. You're so economical. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, you can use a food processor. I am going to be adding chia seeds. And so it depends on how well your food processor grinds things up and how smooth you want it. The Vitamix is a dream for dressings if you want them silky, silky smooth. But you could definitely, if you were patient as well, with the S blade is what you'd want to use in the food processor. And you, the other question was, did I peel the ginger and the turmeric? No, I didn't. I just scrubbed it. 
it's if you do want to peel it the best way to do it would be just with the back of a spoon because you don't want to dig in a lot of the phytonutrients are in the skin and right below it so i don't have an issue with using it just unpeeled as long as it's clean so i'm adding the powdered mustard so everybody should have some powdered mustard on the ready okay and you could use mustard seeds as well but again you'd want to make sure you're grinding it very very well in that case so i will add um i do need to add some water so and the water again the amount it's easier to add more than to try to thicken up a thin dressing although i can give you some hints about that too so I'm gonna add actually half a cup here of water. And then for chia seeds, this is one of the ways you can thicken a dressing without changing the flavor. And I'm gonna give you another in a second, but chia seeds are gonna be packed with, as we know, fiber, protein, omega-3 fatty acids, and they just don't have a lot of flavor. So they're very neutral. So I'm adding the chia seeds to the dressing. And another hint that adds a lot of nutrition, where did it go? Oh, it's hidden, are white beans. So you may say beans in your dressing? Yes, trust me. Now, my recipes, you don't tell people what is in there. You just say, I made this really delicious dressing because people freak out about things like legumes. Even though if you told me you put legumes in something, I'd be jumping around. Right now, legumes are beans, peas, lentils. So I made some mycoba beans and I just did them from dry, no salt in the Instant Pot. Very, very easy. I actually, um, I, I soaked them overnight. So it was six minutes and then 10 minutes quick release uh, and they're perfect. So I'm adding a quarter of a cup of those beauties. You can use any bean that you would like. A lot of dressings I find use nuts, a lot of cashews, and they're so heavy and we don't realize how many calories. The idea of energy density versus nutrient density, nuts are fine, but they are very energy dense. So when you're adding a cup of nuts to a recipe, and I've seen some that have maybe a little bit of water, half a cup of water and one cup of nuts. I just fall over. No, no, no. That's way too many, way too, way too rich. Okay. Sweetness. Now, depending on the sweetness of the fruit you're adding, I like to use the healthiest sweetener on the planet, dates, right? So the most concentrated, obviously, if you use just straight fruit, that's not even dried fruit, that's even healthier. But when we want a concentrated sweetness, we want dates. Now dates predominantly have, there's two different types to purchase. One is the Deglet Noor and the other is the Medjool. So Deglet Noor are smaller. So when you see a recipe for Deglet Noor that uses Deglet Noor, it's typically two of those dates compared to one of the Medjool. The Medjool dates will you, I typically buy them in a plastic box. And when I get home, I open each one, take out the pits, and then transfer them into a zip top bag that I put in the bottom of my fridge. That way I don't have to try to pry out the pits when they're cold and hard. And this also keeps them much softer than if you left them in the plastic container. I was helping my parents over the weekend and um, for Father's Day I did a whole little Italian meal for my mom and dad and my mom had the dates still in the plastic tub in the fridge and they were so hard. I had to heat them up in water and then pry out the pits and if you forget that there's a pit it can ruin your dressing and potentially your blender if it's not a strong one. So we're going to add just one medjool date but you could do two Deglet Nors if you wish. And you don't have to do any. I mean, this is completely a taste, taste preference. We're going to add some kind of vinegar. So we've already added lime juice. 
water, and now we're gonna add some vinegar. About a third of a cup, but again, this is completely flexible. If you don't like vinegar, if you, I love vinegar, but if you don't like vinegar, then just use more citrus, right? You can even do grapefruit. You can change everything up. There's no reason why you have to feel you're stuck with a recipe. And that's what I love talking about with my book because it gives you the freedom of a place to start and then all the different variations to make things enjoyable day after day after day because we all like some variety. So now it's time to put in the basil. So I have beautiful basil from my garden. It's just growing fantastically. And I love all kinds of colors. So as we all in the plant-based community talk about the importance of color because that's where the phytonutrients are, right? The plant-based nutrients. So I have purple basil is much purple. See, I have a purple shirt. I know AJ's favorite color is purple. That's because purple means health. So that those anthocyanins are the pigments in purple fruits and vegetables like blueberries, purple potatoes, eggplant, and those provide a ton of antioxidant power. Do we have more questions before what? I zip? Oh, thank you for asking. Let me see. Do, 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 do. It goes very fast. Well, there was one question for me. What time is the webinar tonight? 5 p.m. And I'll uh, provide the link. What? Yeah. So that, I, you probably answered this. Joy wanted to know what kind of bean are you using? Yes. My coba bean, but it could be any white bean, any bean at all. It doesn't matter. If you're not concerned about color, which I could care less about what the color of the dressing ends up being. You could use a black bean, you could use kidney bean, you could use any beans. Great. And Sean says, I have a flax chia blend. Could I use that instead of chia seeds? Well, absolutely. No question. And I'm going to use more flax today in other recipes, but I like to sneak flax in everywhere I can. Great. And Dina says that you look very fit. What are you doing for exercise? Well, one thing we know is she reams lemons. I do. I ream lemons and limes. Um, and I also run and I also do um, some strength training and I have that machine at the gym that's the stairs that like the step mill that oh my gosh never gets easier you're walking up the stairs. So I find it helps with mental clarity so much to get my heart pumping. So especially during this quarantine when the gyms were closed because I would go a couple times a week. I decided that's it. I am using those dumbbells. Everybody seems to have somewhere in their closet. And so I put them out, put my yoga mat down, did intervals running on those days I'd normally go to the gym and then did my exercises with those dumbbells. I was, it wasn't fancy, but it was consistent. And I think that's the most important piece with exercise is just consistency. And then my husband and I like to walk at night um, around the neighborhood. So we usually go for three or four miles at night. Great. Kathy wants to know if dates really need to be refrigerated. She leaves hers in the cupboard. I leave mine in the cupboard too. And I live in a very hot climate. Yeah, I have seen some mold. So I just have always kept them in the fridge, um, especially in the summertime. One thing that I found too, is if you use a lot of dates, AJ, you may have noticed this but every once in a while, I'll open up a pit or a date and it'll have some black mold in there. Yes, there, there's actually a question. Some, uh, some uh, Dennis says, what's the black dirt that sometimes in dates? Yeah, I think it's a type of mold. I've read up on it and there wasn't a lot of information, but I just usually, when I come across one of those, throw it out, wash the knife and then keep going. And so I typically find that though in the summer. So I don't know if it's a heat you know, situation. And when we buy them, we don't know how they've been handled up until, you know, we buy them. So I haven't ever had any problems with them in the fridge. Great. But like and I said, I'm Jennifer grows her cucumbers. She says the soil is premium, but sometimes it takes like metal. Any ideas? Ooh, I don't know. Um, that's interesting what it's pulling out. I wonder, is it just the cucumbers? Or is everything that 
like if you grow parsley and everything that is coming out of there tasting metallic. I'm yeah. gonna whir this up. So I just want to make sure that the chia seeds are broken up. And it used to be that we didn't think chia seeds needed to be ground in order to get the nutrients, even though we know very well that flax does. But the last information I've seen said it's better to grind them when possible. So I have a recipe on my website for a chia mango pudding. And there's one version where you just stir it and another where you use the Vitamix. So again, to get the maximum nutrients, you'd want to blend it. Not that unblended chia seeds are bad. They're not. It's just, again, optimization. So I typically will keep my dressings in a um, canning jar. But when I'm ready to serve them, if I'm having a party or something, I will use squeeze bottles. So then this dressing is ready to go. And what I just realized, I forgot the garlic, which happens sometimes. So I'll deal with that off, <laughs> off camera uh, because I want to make sure that I'm moving on and showing you another recipe. Okay. So are we ready for number two? Absolutely. There's a question I don't know if you know the answer okay. to. How long can you keep vinegar? Oh, forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, absolutely. I've never seen that a vinegar has gone bad. Wine turns into vinegar. So kombucha turns into vinegar, right? When you let it go. So I don't think you'd have to worry about expiration on that at all. Right. Especially Jennifer, if we're talking Je about in, 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 or in art, you know, like in I, and yeah. I assume you're going to, Jennifer asks, uh, do you refrigerate your dressing afterwards? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No question. We, um, there's no, there's no need, just because the vinegar is, and the lime and all that is in there. Yes, that will hold this vinegar or this dressing will hold for at least a week, but it does need to be refrigerated. And I always, a trick that is important in the refrigerator is don't put anything perishable on the door because the door is going to be the warmest part. And if you have people at home that keep opening the door and shutting the door, then that's going to be really hard. So I keep my dressings in the back of the fridge and, or in my garage fridge. Okay. Are we ready for Anne's favorite dressing or favorite dip? Absolutely. Okay. Leslie has a question. Should hemp seeds also be ground up like chia seeds? Hemp seeds do not need to be. They're more like nuts, but that's something I would definitely keep in the freezer. They are all nuts to go in the freezer. Um, I Okay, I'll say this. In my classes, I tell them only the nuts that are a attached to your body stay out of the freezer. The rest of them go in the freezer. So yes, we keep all nuts and all grains, whole grains, flowers. I keep all of that in the freezer. It gets hot where I am. I know you're in Indio and it gets hot there too, but it gets 110, you know, where I am too. So where do, where do you live? Not, not your address. Cause somebody gave their address out once we don't want your address. Oh, <laughs> no, I live South of Sacramento in Lodi. Nice. So, Yes. So now what I'm doing is transitioning to a recipe that my daughter invented. It's very easy. It's in the cookbook. It's actually part of the breakfast breakwich bar. And I'll make sure that I explain what that's all about. But what she was craving was chocolate. So she said, mom, I want some kind of a spread because I think um, I do make my own Nutella from time to time, but sometimes it's nice to have one that's a nut-free option. And so she wanted something that she could basically crave and eat within minutes. And that's what we did. So we start with a very ripe banana. If you have ever thrown away a banana, then you 
probably haven't thought about its value beyond just eating because we never throw bananas away. In fact, I usually get my bananas that are already speckled at the grocery store. They're cheaper. They call them banana bread bananas. And even though the outside's a little speckled, they will last in the refrigerator. It kind of arrests their ripening a bit. And then when they're just way too ripe, then they go into the freezer. And so I have some beautifully ripe bananas. And so all I've done so far is mash the banana. And I'm doing two varieties here because I know Chef AJ doesn't do chocolate. And so some of your community may not um, consume chocolate. And so I'm doing a kind of a butterscotchy um, alternative. Well, that sounds amazing. And just to be clear, the reason I don't consume chocolate is that I don't have anything against it when in, yeah. you know, cocoa powder, I just, it gives me migraines. That's, so that's why I stopped about 10 years ago. Oh yeah, that's a great reason. <laughs> I have many friends who struggle, you know, struggled with migraines. I actually have one that was getting 12 or 13 a month where she was just incapacitated. So we came up with a fun smoothie to get in her greens and different things that she needed. And then I think she went 203 days without a migraine. So we put that in the cookbook um, because it's Jenny's anti-migraine smoothie. So now we're gonna do either the cocoa powder. So there's, is this is actually cacao. So people have asked, what's the difference between cocoa powder and cacao? So cacao beans, are the origin, right? And so what happens is those beans can be heated at a low temperature and the fat separated and that's cocoa butter. And then you can take those beans and ferment them, dry them, ferment them. And if you roast them, then it turns into cocoa powder. And sometimes a lot of different chemicals are added and sugar and different things like a cocoa mix, think of that or they can just take the nibs and grind them into raw cacao. So that's not as sweet, but it actually isn't really sweet at all, but it has that wonderful antioxidants. So if you do consume cocoa powder, then this would be the great way to use it. Because, you know, when I talk about this in my classes, chocolate, cocoa powder at least, has wonderful properties. I mean, it's a bean, right? It starts out as a bean. But what we add to it typically is dairy milk, lots of sugar, and then some kind of saturated fat. And so we don't want those. And so basically cacao powder is all the good without any of the bad. What we're gonna add it to though is the sweetness and that's the banana. So I'm gonna mash this up and then now we get to add any kind of mix-ins that we would like. And I know, again, this seems so basic. How can this be tasty? Oh, it's so yummy. I love it with apple slices or fresh strawberries. It's a great dip for fresh strawberries. But I'm gonna add flax because we need, someone had asked about the chia flax blend. You could definitely add that chia flax blend here. Now, if I'm making this for my daughter, she likes peanut butter and she's obviously not on the ultimate weight loss plan of any kind. I mean, she's 14, right? So adding more calories, you could easily add walnuts to this. You could add peanut butter to this. You could play around with, you know, anything you'd like, but this is, I know it's not gorgeous, but it's chocolate. Now, as I had <laughs> mentioned, Anne said, I said, oh, don't you love it with apples? She says, apples? I just eat it with a spoon. I know, she's smart. No, I think it looks great. And Florence wanted to know how should cacao powder be stored? How long can it be stored? And the same question about your wonderful salad dressing. Okay, so cacao powder, I put it in the freezer and it lasts for months and months and months. So. I do, and you may think, how big is her freezer? Well, I do have a stand-up freezer in the garage, and it was one of the best purchases that we made 18 years ago. I keep that thing packed, and the, oh, my only concern is if the power ever went out, right? But I, it, 
it is where I keep so much. And the dressing will last at least a week, as I had mentioned, in the back of your fridge. Okay, you don't want it on the door. So for the butterscotch version, butterscotch E, I'm using maca root. So I don't know how much you've played around with that, but it's fun. It has an interesting kind of malty butterscotch flavor. So this, um, I'm just gonna add a teaspoon or so to this. And that's it. Again, I'm gonna add some flax to it. And I can also sneak in some amla powder. So Dr. Gregor, who we love, always talks about how great amla powder is. It's quite bitter, but you can put in an eighth of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon into here, and you won't even notice it. And it's a very, it's gooseberry, Indian gooseberries. So it's gonna be, again, ridiculously anti-inflammatory. So inflammation is wonderful when you have a snake bite, but it is not great long-term. Okay, so more flax. And question about the flax. Um, in case anybody was wondering. So I keep the flax seeds in the freezer and then I grind them with a little, let's see here, I'll show you, a little coffee grinder. And I use this about once a week or so, fill a mason, mason jar and then I put that in the fridge. So that's how I do it. I don't buy ground flax because again, it goes bad quickly. And typically when you see ground flax, it is not in the refrigerator section. It is just on the shelf. So we don't know how long ago it was ground and those really important antioxidants and fatty acids are susceptible to oxidation when they're, um, when heat, their heat is present. So these are the dips, very easy. Like I said, and I have some strawberries, but they're down the hall in the, other fridge. Last recipe. Are we ready to move to that? Yeah. Can I just ask you a question from Please Clara do. Lynn? How can you tell if flax is rancid? Sometimes I think it tastes bitter. Yes. Um, flax, like all oils, when they go, when it goes rancid, it kind of smells like plastic. It's almost, it's hard to describe, but once you've smelled a rancid oil, you won't forget it. It just smells off. If you are thinking that it might, there might be, yeah, that this might have gone bad, or you've just had it out for a months, right? Not kept cold and it was already ground, then I'd probably start with a new batch and just keep it in the freezer. Great. And Joyce says, what about ground flax sprouts? Do they go bad quickly? And Melanie wants to know what brand of amla powder do you use and where do you get it? So flax sprouts? Yeah, I never I heard of those either. Yeah. No, I don't know about those. Um, is that, I don't, maybe she can give us more information if she's actually sprouting from flax or um, I'm not sure. And then amla, I don't really pick a specific brand I either, normally I go to an Indian spice store that's either around work or home and I pick up the omelet powder. So you just want to make sure that all that's in there is gooseberries. So this ingredient's only gooseberries, pa gooseberry powder. So that's it. I don't have a favorite brand. I have found the Indian spice store is a great place for many different ingredients. So let me move things a little bit here so I can get to my food processor. I'm done with these. Right. I, I'm, I've never tried maca powder, but you're making me want to try it. It looks very good. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I said, the there's different flavors, or not necessarily different flavors, but there's, well, gelatinized and that seems to be um the best flavor wise some people complain about the flavor online but i like it i like i said i think it tastes kind of like butterscotch okay and it's actually a root vegetable yeah. from peru 
Uh, oh. Joy says to clarify, it's sprouted ground flaxseed. Oh, I'm not sure. So I think we would treat it like anything else. Once it's ground, then it has the ability to lose the nutrient content fairly quickly. So I would most definitely keep that cold in the fridge or freezer. Um, and if it's already ground, I would say for very long, a month or so, that's why I like to grind my own. That way I have control over that. Okay, any other questions at the moment? Nope, not yet. Okay. All right. So now I am going to talk about the acai bowl that raises the bar. Okay, so this is funny. Costco had come out with an acai bowl in their food court, right? And there was a lot of fanfare about that, 2018, 2019. But what's interesting is that bowl has, I think it has 30 grams of sugar in it. Uh, and so it's like, wait a sec, what is going on? How, I can make something better, right? I know I can make something better. So what you can do is purchase acai. So this is just one brand. But it's really important to look at the ingredients because in this one, the only ingredient is basically acai pulp. Okay. And then it says citric acids. So the sugar content of this zero, and that's what we want. We don't want any added sugar. And if you were to just open up this little package of acai and dig in, you probably spit it out because it's not sweet. So again, what is our wonderful choice for sweetness, natural sweetness, banana in something like this. I'm gonna make this bowl. So all I'm gonna do is open up this little package, squeeze out, this is a 100 gram package. So again, the recipes are gonna be in the show notes. Frozen banana. When you freeze bananas, make sure you peel them first. If you don't, if you just put them in the freezer, you're not gonna have fun with hard bananas you're gonna have to peel. So if you know you're gonna be doing this type of recipe, it's actually even easier to slice the bananas into small pieces and then freeze them like that so that you can just take a scoop out. So this is about a, one banana and the acai. And then of course, taking it to the next level, raising the bar, is adding black beans. Black beans, what are you doing? I'm the nutrition professor and my students know I love beans and I will stick them in anywhere I can. So we're adding about a quarter of a cup. I'm just eyeballing it. Now, how did I prepare these beans? In the Instant Pot, right, from dry, no salt, easy, right? no brainer. I always have them and I'll freeze them just like this. Okay. But I've got that in there. And then I am going to get the flax seed. We're going to add a little more flax. And again, you wouldn't eat all this stuff in one, one sitting here. So I'm just showing you examples because, you know, Dr. Gregor talks about getting your flax every day. So we want lots of options and the omelet powder as well. So I'm going to add a little quarter of a teaspoon there. And then my, oh, I love these. These are my chai spice blend and pumpkin pie spice. And I just, these are in the cookbook. Um, as well as on my website, thenutritionprofessor.com. But I love these lids. I don't know if you found these lids, but they're fantastic. And so I can make this up in a bigger batch and then I have it to shake on everything. My chai spice blend has turmeric and black pepper. So you're getting that wonderful combination and you can use it for all kinds of things. So I don't mind having all the different flavors. So I add it all in. The pumpkin pie spice has cloves, which is one of the most antioxidant rich um, spices. So before I do this, any questions? No, but uh, I, I asked people that were watching live if they ever tasted maca and some put it in their smoothies and say they don't taste it, but infinite love and gratitude says it tastes like malted milk powder. So now it makes me really wanna try it. 
Yeah, so you have to play, play around with it. And a lot of the flavors, I don't know about you, but I, nutritional yeast was a, uh, an acquired taste for me. You know, the first time I tasted it, I thought, I don't know about this. And now I love it. My daughter, I wrote a, a Q&A article on my website with my daughter and I asked her, what is her favorite green? And she's 14 and she said, oh, arugula, no question arugula is spicy that is an acquired taste she said and actually she said when i first tasted it i didn't like it but i love it now i can't get enough of it so we actually have um the ability this is crazy but the enzymes in our saliva change the more we are exposing it to different greens to make the bitterness less bitter so the more you eat these greens the more you enjoy them. And that goes across the board. Any other questions before I word this up? Yeah, Keith says, where do you get the acai pulp? I actually found it at Grocery Outlet. So you can find it at, I think most grocery stores in the freezer section. Just be real careful that you're not buying a smoothie blend because some of those have sugar added and other ingredients that you don't want. You want just the pure, Acai. And when you can find it, I know at Costco, the bowl is like $5. I think it's $4.99. But for $3.99, I bought a four pack of the acai. So that gives me the base for four for $4. <laughs> so it's a better deal. And you get to sneak in black beans. Okay, so I'm going to word this up and then I'm going to come back for more questions. You guys, you know who likes acai bowls if you follow him. I love him. He's been on the show many times, Dr. Doug Lyle. I guess he gets them uh, delivered from, I think he says, Jamba Juice. Oh, Trader Joe's has acai with nothing added. That's good to know. Thank you. I'm going there tomorrow, Nadege. We go once a week to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. They're right across the street from each other, but I have to go all the way to Palm Desert, which is like a 20 minute drive. Whereas I used to live next door to Trader Joe's. So that's why we I'm go gonna grab a, a bowl. Oh, and Marcus says you can also find acai pulp. I love sprouts. I try to go to sprouts too once a week. We do, they're all on the same street. So it makes it really easy. Yes, we are, tw we're 25 minutes from Trader Joe's. So I plan my trips carefully. Now with the food processor, and this is a crazy food processor. It is something that I have recommended to my students so many times that I have memorized the model number. It is a Hamilton Beach 70740. And no, I am not a representative of Hamilton Beach, but this thing is Usually I find it from 30 to $40, sometimes even less. And it sounds screechy and it's really light. And you think, oh my gosh, it's just a piece of junk. No, it is fantastic. Actually, the person who recommended to me is Ron. He owns a Sun Cafe, I think in Los Angeles. He owned part of a raw restaurant up here. And he said he has the Roboku, which are the like $1,500 food processors that we would use in industrial kitchens. And he said, this one outworks it in many situations. So if you want an inexpensive, but reliable food processor, and I've had mine for several years, um, but you want, whenever you're using the food processor, you want to make sure you know what kind of blade you need. So this is the S blade. Okay. So that's the S blade. And as compared to a disc, that would um, grate or slice. And then by putting your finger up inside to hold the blade, then it won't come crashing down into the bowl. So for me though, right now, I'm gonna just take the blade out and scrape. Um, I have a superhero name. So Chef AJ, you asked if I had a nickname. I don't really have a nickname, but my superhero name is Super Scraper because I do not like wasting food. So I will scrape, scrape, scrape. And so I have some fun Tovalo scrapers um, that I like and they make it easy. I was smiling when I saw Jane Esselstyn um, talking about how much they love their Tovalo scrapers. 
I have been using these for years and love them. Okay. Um, the, the Esther would like the model number again of your 70740. So that's Hamilton Beach food processor 70740. I think it's a seven or eight cup. I'm not exactly, I don't remember that piece of it. So now we have our acai, right? Which I, yeah, I was going to say we got it a little bit soft. That now, looks delicious. I got to stop doing this show before lunch because you guys always make me hungry. And it's like, I always want to eat whatever the guest is making. I know. And if we had smell a vision, I could give it right to you. What we're going to put on top. Now, of course, you could do nuts. You could do coconut, those types of things. But those are high calorie options. My daughter, I'd probably put hemp seeds on there. But what I like to do is more fruit. And this is gold kiwi. So gold kiwi, kiwi is incredible. So kiwi protects your DNA. It helps with irritable bowel. It has all kinds of phenomenal benefits. But the gold is even better than the green. And so I do the green, of course, but the gold also I found basically doesn't have any fur, very thin skin. And I even eat the kiwi when it has like furry skin, it doesn't bother me. I just wash it and eat it. But if you're a little not used to that and a little shy about doing that, get the gold kiwi. So I'm you just know, Dr. Brecker, I was having dinner at Dr. Baxter Montgomery's house with him and he eats the skin of the kiwi. And so now I do. And he even eats the stem of the strawberry. Oh yeah. I mean, it's greens. Yeah. So do I, I mean, it's, it's viable fruit. So it is, you know what you have to do next. So I have a challenge for you, AJ, is an, or a lemon. So when you have the lemons that you'd squeezed into um, water or what have you, eat the whole lemon with the peel, just like that. Not just eating the peel, but the whole lemon. You do that and people will look at you like, oh my gosh, she just ate a lemon, holy moly. But it actually tastes great. And kumquats. I love kumquats. I have some in my fridge right now. And those are fantastic because you eat the skin and the inside without even thinking twice about it. Have you ever tried the, I think they're called golden berries. They're round and they sell them at Trader Joe's and they, they taste like sweet tarts. No. They're have you ever tried kiwi berries? Yes, they're fantastic. Oh my goodness. They're these gorgeous little purple kiwis they look just like kiwis and those are hard to find of one of my students brought me a whole bag um she worked for the school district and they had a big load of them and so she shared with me but um oh they were very yummy very very yummy so i have the kiwi on there i'm going to actually add some frozen blueberries i basically don't buy berries especially blueberries, raspberries, or blackberries that aren't frozen. I don't know about you, but I can be so careful in the grocery store, making sure there's no mold on those raspberries. And then by the time I get home, they've molded. I don't know if that happens to you, but they're expensive. So when you get them frozen, you don't have to worry about that. And then you have them whenever you want them. So I'm going to add some blueberries and just go crazy with the blueberries and then i'm going to add some mint so i have some gorgeous pineapple mint growing now there's nothing special about pineapple mint except for the fact that it kind of has a little pineapple-y smell and taste to it but any mint works my recommendation from being a front yard farmer is grow your mint in a pot because it will take over. So you definitely don't want it to just grow wild and take over your whole front yard. But in a pot, I want to get this rim looking nice. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we can, uh, you can see how yummy this acai bowl looks. And we did this for pennies and you can, no one is ever going to know that there's black beans in there or on the powder. 
And the benefit of the black beans, not only does it has, have protein and they have fiber and they have wonderful antioxidants, but they have staying power. You're not going to feel hungry in five minutes. When you eat a super sweet, like sorbet type dessert, which you'd find if you bought this out, then some may get a headache right after because it's so sweet, but likely you're not going to be hungry. You're going to be hungry in just a few minutes. So question for questions. I'm going to go grab my book and we can Great. answer. Uh, well, a pumpkin is saying, what are kiwi berries? So I'm going to just post a little link for, that I found for you because yeah. they're hard to describe, but they're adorable and they're delicious. And somebody is saying those golden berries that I asked you about that you get at Trader Joe's are actually gooseberries. I didn't know that, but oh. they're really good. Yeah, I'm going to be looking for them. When you were when I used dry, to When I used to go you... to the movies, that was my movie snack. <laughs> okay. When we were allowed to go to the movies. Yeah. Do you buy them dry or like they in a pack? No, they're in the refrigerated section of Trader oh, Joe's okay. where the blueberries are, but they're yellow and they're round and they're just, they're really good. They're kind of sweet and sour at the same time. I'm going to look for them. Another option that you could put on here if you wanted some crunch, but you didn't want to do a granola. I have a granola recipe in here, but if you wanted to go, you know, no nuts or grains, then you could do mulberries. I don't know how much you played around with dried mulberries, but They're they are delicious. Yummy. Yeah. So that would be another addition to the acai bowl. Any other questions? I can't see any right now, but please show us your book and I'll okay. post the website where you yes. can get it. At Foodiebars.com. Foodie I'm going to put that in. Foodie so Bar. it's called the Foodie Bar Way and the subtitle is One Meal, Lots of Options So Everyone's Happy. And that's because I transitioned my family. My daughter was five and my son was eight. And we transitioned to, you know, I'm a dietitian. I've been a dietitian for 20 years, 21 years. Um, but we transitioned at that point to whole food plant-based. And I knew I was the one in control of the shopping and the cooking. So I knew if I could make the food tasty, that everybody would be fine with it. The other thing, though, is when you're dealing with kids or any of us, we get bored. And so we want options. And so without having to cook something different for everybody, it's one meal with lots of options. So everyone's happy. And although this is magnificent for families, it also works really well for singles who just like to have variety. You don't want to eat the same thing all the time. So the foodie bar, most people think like a granola bar or an energy bar. No, 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 no. Like a taco bar. Like all the different options that you could have and incorporate. And we all love that, having it our way. Oh, I want a scoop of this. I want a scoop of that. No, 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 I don't want that. Oh, extra that. And that's exactly what you do here. So I basically, I'll show you um, one of the ways that I like to explain it is my, this is my uh, salsa bar. So basically, if I make salsa, Austin will not eat it because it has cilantro. And Mia won't eat it because it has jalapenos. But if I chop everything up, leave it like I would normally, leave it in separate bowls, and then everybody makes their own salsa, everybody's happy. So I took that idea and brought it from breakfast all the way through dessert. So I have 32 bars, think of them like taco bars, and 94 recipes to support those bars. So I will give you a good example is the loaded potato bar. So Linda Middlesworth and Mary Rogers in Sacramento run two very busy veg groups. And we do pot, well, we used to do potlucks. And one of the times I was featured and we did a loaded potato bar. And we had, I think we ended up having 53 people contribute to this potato bar where we supplied the potatoes and then we had all of these toppings. And so that's basically what I give you. Each bar has a basic bar, which are ingredients that are just easy, cheap, you know, thinking my students that say they have no time, no experience and no money, start here. So for the baked potato bar, bake a potato, leave the skin on. Some mixed vegetables you can get frozen. 
some frozen greens or fresh greens, some salsa, avocado, lime juice, basic. And then raising the bar, which is what we did with our acai bowl, adds in some more adventurous options. So maybe instead of a can of chili beans, you would make my seasoned black beans or my cheesy sauce or my garlic mushrooms. So all of those ideas, and maybe it's something like purple cabbage. You may have thought purple cabbage on a potato. Oh my gosh, yes. So I've done the heavy lifting, given you all the ideas and those reference recipes. And then since I'm a teacher, I have a page for you to take notes. What combinations, worked well. If you have another recipe like a chili, like a nine bean chili recipe that would be great on a potato, write it down here. I make this like a workbook so that you can make it work for you going forward. You can set up parties when we're getting together again and just assign one item to every person and you have a beautiful setup. So breakfast all the way through dessert. And I also teach people how to make dressings and that's what we were talking about today. So I have a dressing bar that's shaken if you don't have a blender or creamy, which is if you have a blender or food processor. And I go through what parts make it creamy, what parts make it tart. And so the idea is that you make your own and you personalize it. So this is, there's a picture for every recipe because that's what my students ask for. And um, it's just ridiculously practical and easy you always have options. And if you don't have parsley, there are three other options listed there. Oh, I'll add cilantro. I don't like cilantro, I'll add basil, perfect. But there's no oil, not one drop of oil in the whole book. So this is, and the only sugar is a little bit of coconut sugar in one or two of the recipes, but it's whole food plant-based and no animal products whatsoever. It sounds absolutely amazing. Now you got me, not only you want me to, got me wanting to eat all the recipes, but I, I have to get that book. So we've posted a link. So guys, check it out. It looks amazing. What a great system. I love it. Thank you so much. I even, you know, it's funny because right when you started, even before you started, they will have her back. And I'm like, well, let her do today first. And then we'll ask her to come back. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. This is so important to me. I'm with all of my heart and my students, it's funny. They say, well, can I live with you? No. Can you live with me? No. But this is something that you can actually take me into your kitchen. And I do a lot of work with California Bountiful TV. So I volunteer my time to go at the farmer's market, explain all that you need to know about a vegetable, and then we come back home and prepare a recipe. And I've already done 50 of those segments for them. And so those are all available on my website. So if anybody's wondering, what do I do with, you know, collard greens? There you go. And it, it shows you hands on, but it is so fun. I love doing this. This makes my little heart sing to know people are making these foods that their whole family can enjoy. Well, you're, because, a, you're a wonderful presenter. Anne Wheat was thank right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I just, you can, I can just feel how excited I have a, my aunt right now was dealing with some leg pain and arthritis and she was so uncomfortable. She just, she said, I have, she had a baker's cyst on the back of her knee and she had, was recovering from a hip replacement. And she said, I hurt so much every day. And so I've been helping her transition and nothing makes me happier than she says, the pain is gone. The pain is gone. She ditched dairy. She's doing all the salads with the beautiful dressings and it's working and she's feeling so good. And that's what keeps me going. I want people to realize that they have so much power in their fork, so much power. And this can be something that doesn't alienate people. This is about uniting us at, you know, with the whole COVID thing, but the idea of around the table to share our meals. And this is very inclusive for everybody. That's the book is for everybody so that you can add all the different ingredients that you like and experiment with a little bit of this. I have a kale pizza in there. You're thinking kale pizza, start with a little bit and then you progress. And it's, oh, it's just a blast. 
Well, Kathy says she loves the cookbook and Nadege says she bought Foodie Bar after Tammy Kramer recommended the book. And there's somebody named Kip Bowman that's watching that everybody's saying hi to. So I want to say hi too to Hello <laughs> Kip. And he says, Timory's Foodie Bar Way is the best cookbook with lots of tips and flexibility to make everyone happy. So guys, yeah, definitely check it out. There was one last question and I'm sorry, it skipped the name who asked it, but what are the must haves at Trader Joe's? I'll say for me, it's Cruciferous Crunch. Yes, um, there are, I'm trying to think, I get my tempeh, I, um, we do buy tempeh, my family loves it to crumble on salad, I have a couple recipes in the book for that, so I definitely get the organic tempeh there, um, and the sprouted tofu, and I get, I'm trying to think, I have to go down each of the aisles, um, hmm, frozen organic corn, frozen organic peas, let me think. Those are the things that come to my mind that are, yeah, frozen um, rice cauliflower just to have as an emergency because it's not hard to rice cauliflower, but those are a couple of things that we get there all the time. And their vinegars are great. They have a great um, orange, what is it? It's not champagne. Do you know which one it is? Um, is it the vinegar? Yeah, it's an orange vinegar that's really, really tasty without adding anything else just as the salad. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the name of it, but it's the only orange vinegar. Their red wine vinegar is great. I like Costco's balsamic better than um, Trader Joe's balsamic. But, nice. Okay. They have, oh, yeah. Sorry. Good. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. No, no. Go ahead. Uh, the, uh, Dina wants to know, other than yours, what's your favorite cookbook? Oh, that's not easy. I love cookbooks so much. I go in and out of um, love, not out of love, but I rotate through. I have found um, one of them that I really enjoyed that's an older cookbook was Appetite for Reduction by um, Issa Chandra Moskowitz. That one is kind of a ghost one. I don't know that it got a lot of press, but it's a really good cookbook. And it's low, again, lower in fat. So many of the cookbooks have a lot of nuts and, you know, just lots of maple syrup or they'll use coconut oil and things like that. I love um, straight up food. So Kathy Fisher's on tomorrow and she has a great cookbook. I love that one. There are a lot. I, yeah. Too many to name. Right. That's great. Well, thank you so much. And of course, you're welcome to come back. We really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely going to check out your book. It sounds like it's perfect for families because like you say, options is what it's all about. Options are what it's all about. But it's also, yeah, great for people who are even on their own that just want some variety. My um, salad base is what I do every day for my lunch, whether I'm away at work or here. And all the different options, I never want to go out for lunch because my food is better and it's cheaper. And when I go out, I usually just say, and the kids are tired of hearing this from me, but I know, mom, you could have made it cheaper, tastier and better for you. Like, yeah, I, it, that's a smart kid because I feel the same way. Well, thank you so much, Tim Marie. I really enjoyed our time together. Thank you all for being here. I hope you guys will come back at five o'clock for my free webinar on Kick Sugar and also come back tomorrow at 11 �����������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������